Welcome to the Euphoria Podcast, episode three of season two. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I'm your host, Dracos. Deficio is once again absent this week, but he will be back for the next episode if you are missing him. It is now a video podcast. You can see me now if you're on YouTube. Otherwise, we're on iTunes and SoundCloud or wherever you get your podcast. just about. Of course, updates since we were last year. The set is steadily growing. Uh, you can see Amazing's picture out of the wall as well as a Belgian flag in honor of one of our soon-to-be guests. Standings have been updated. Power rankings have not. I think we're going to tackle that one once we get back from Riff Rivals, uh, as it's going to change pretty drastically. You can see Splice there at the top. Uh, and there's a final update on our bet. So Maurice did lose in the bet last week with Vettius, uh, predicting that Schalke would beat G2, which means he does owe us a Vola Bear dance. Hasn't followed through yet has bailed twice on me now, so if you see him on Twitter uh, posting anything, feel free to respond with a, a cheeky, where's my Vola Bear dance? Where's my bet at? Amazing. Harass Maurice, that's the most important thing. Of course, our guests for today are Shox and Oda Wamne. We're gonna be looking at some overhyped and underrated players. We're gonna be talking a little bit about Splice. I mean, we're inevitably gonna talk about the World Cup a little bit too, because Shox is here and she's excited about Belgium. So without further ado, Shox, Oda Wamne, Welcome to the set. Come on in. This is awesome. I know. It's very cool. It's an experience, right? Can I shake a hand? Yeah. Oh, ooh, ooh. Hi. Is this is this we're gonna do a Leno style? Hey, Hi. hey, welcome to the show. Hey, Should good to hey, good to have you. Yeah, nice. Thank you for shaking my yes, hand. Yes, nice. Good stuff. Um, I'm all for so I wouldn't <clears throat> expect that from you. <laughs> you're way to come. No, I gotta give you. You know, you're a player. You're you're equal. I don't I don't see you as an 04 player. The you're 04 still, doesn't matter. I still remember. Ooh, <laughs> I'm still number one in your heart. Of course, but darling. Oh. Of course. And at number two in the. Uh, and number yeah, and, and you're also in an A tier uh, yes. in our preseason power talk rankings, about that. which we, we will talk about later. Joy oh joy. Of course, tenth place by technicality of spelling, tied for ninth, I guess, with H2K. Um, so first off, shocks you're back from Belgium. How was your week away from the, the EU LCS? Well, it was only three days. I was with Three the days, not a week. Yeah. Uh, I didn't miss the show, but Belgium was really worth it. Got to see some family, got to see Belgium win, got to drink some beer, have some chocolate. Everything, perfect Belgium experience, Your perfect basically. Weekend. Yeah, it was great. Not so perfect for you, Odo, with the, the O2 <laughs> this weekend, I know. But I don't want to dwell on it. Just tell me, tell me, what do you do on your days off, Odo? Talk um, to me, like, what did you, what was, was it a fun, like, ooh, let's go shed all this baggage from losing? Uh... I mean, sometimes when it's not as drastic that we lose two weeks in a row, that happens, but it was kind of, we were collectively wailing together. Mm. So we were just sitting there and being miserable with our lives and yeah, it, it was wow. great. It sounds like a wholesome, Depressing. fun-filled weekend. No, it, it was great, Shocks. We had tons of fun. We we loved being all four on our day off. Oh, perfect. Fantastic. I do have one question. So last time you were on the show, you and you and Soas were here, and you were talking about, like, you really wanted more stuff in your room. You wanted it to feel more like home. I want an update there because, so for context, the last time we were here, so Odo was like, I don't have anything in my room. Like, Splice oh, like no, should take nothing. us to Ikea. We should pimp our room Wait, out. Wait, no bed? I, I no want it, closet? I mean, they, have, no. they said they have basics. Basic right? necessities. But I want to know, have you upgraded it? Do you have, like, some sweet band posters? Like, talk to me about the, the room status update. Does it feel more like home, or are you still like, oh, my God, why am I in a gaming house? Uh, <laughs> it's kind of the same. I mean, my room back home in Romania is, like, pimped out of its mind. So. What, what's, what, what posters do you have? What bands or which stars or TV I mean, stars? I'm uh, not really with bands and stuff, but I recently went to this, um, what was it? It was like 10 years of Kill a Kill. Mm -hmm. And I got like a huge ass poster and it was insane. So I'm looking to hang that on my wall soon. But other than that, I wasn't really, you no know. No footballers, no swimmers? <sighs> I mean, I used to be into swimming a lot and have, uh, you know, I didn't really have posters, but I had people I looked up to a lot. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really have this, you know, normal childhood in the sense that I was, uh, I had a lot of time to pin my room and stuff. I was mostly focused back then on like my swimming and now with league and stuff, I didn't really have this time to, you know, I'm not really the kind of guy that just expresses stuff and puts posters in his room and stuff. That's fair. Interesting to hear. I was kind of hoping that there would be more that you had like totally decked it out. That there would yeah. be like a nice like you know nah. bear rug Tokyo or something. Tokyo Hotel, uh, Fake, back like, street boys. Yeah, exactly. I mean, especially with the all four. I, I think I deserve some Tokyo Hotel in my life. So oh, now yeah. there's an evil. Some emotional evening yeah. sitting in bed. <laughs> Great. Ooh. Yeah. I do want to point out though, you brought a gift for the show. We started asking players to do that. Odo, you're the first person to do it. So you brought us a sapling, and I just want to read. Uh, uh, let, let me do it. Let me. Do you you want to read the message that you wrote here? This is like this is from right next to my heart for for all the people out there. So it's like, for all the tanks out there, 
this Maokai sapling is dedicated to you. And also, as a little extra for the co-host that is missing today, screw you, Linga. And this is it, the yeah. Maokai sapling right here <laughs> in our hearts. I had to ask you about that because he sent out a tweet with oh, before we podcast questions for Odo Amin and Shucks, and then you were like, when did you guys change from having like feel good yeah, star yeah, players to this? losers? You're so I mean, are you calling us losers? I mean, I mean present company excluded, no, but we're I definitely doing well. We're doing good. I yeah. mean, we're not 04 in the LCS no. right now. Yeah, but I mean, you're part of the podcast and you're part of the, you oh, know, of the, the show. crew. So you're calling yourself a, a loser? Kind of, yeah. Oh. That's rough, dude. That's rough. I, I mean, it's kind of true, no? It's I lost four temporary. games in a row. Yes, but you lost many last split and you almost ended up winning, you know? You're going to Rift Rivals. It's <laughs> I great. mean, not in a row. <laughs> Yeah. I do. I do love the the make you feel better effort. It's like you spent a lot of your career losing. This shouldn't be. But a you big always deal. did really well in the end. You know, perennial third place player. All right. Oh, oh yeah, no, that we was appreciate lovely. we appreciate the sapling. I'll put it back on the shelf. Uh, plus the signature, which I did miss at the time, but we'll add it to the various gifts and bet photos. Speaking of which, I hope you notice that your picture in a dog suit is in the background. That's a fetish right there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess, I for him. some people, for some people. I mean, for him, like, look, look, look at him, he's so happy. I've never seen him smile this much. <laughs> it was a good you, day. You are really it enjoying it. Day. You are you overly enjoying it. You can't me as a furry on this podcast. Yeah, pretty way. much. <laughs> me, uh, me and the fish are kind of satisfying your uh, fetishes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not talk what about that anymore. Wow. Oh, no, I forgot how grossly inappropriate you could be on demand, and I appreciate that. And okay. I still can't believe you guys censored my uh, <laughs> my jokes from last time. <laughs> Do you remember? Pre- it? Yes, they were bad, dude. They were insane, man. The f- okay, the first censor was insane, but you guys were really butthurt about it. It was. I'm not even gonna go into it. You, you laughed so much. Come on, you we, loved it. We did, and if you want to go back and listen to that, it's episode eight or episode nine of season one. But we're not gonna go. Uh, but that beep it. was awkwardly long, so it was good. All you know right. when it's when it's too long, it's good. <laughs> I didn't mean to make it sound like that, but whatever. <laughs> okay, our first segment uh, is overhyped, underrated. Today we're going to be talking about overhyped, underrated players. Oh, that's me right now. Okay, well you're going to get a chance to go, so I, I figure I'll go first since it's it's been a while since we've done one of these segments. So the gist is, you pick a player, you talk about why they're overhyped or underrated, you make an argument, preferably a concise one, and we talk about it, right? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Is this person foolish? That kind of thing. Um, so in the spirit of it this week, I think one player that is not getting nearly enough attention right now is Unicorns Love Support Totoro. Uh, he solo killed or 2v2 killed your support, Mr. Kasing there on the fiddlesticks, not respecting yeah. the pike. I think he showed up, he had a huge impact, and he's this guy generally that uh, was under the radar. He did towards the end of last season when Unicorns Love was starting to win. People gave him a little bit of attention, but I think he's just generally not appreciated because the only people, only thing people look at in Unicorns Love right now is Cold and Exile, and I think that... He really helps with that. I think he always ganks mid. He looks good overall. Uh, and I think he's a player that generally deserves more hype. Is he a big part why they went to zero, according to you? I, I would say that, especially in the splice win, that he was a big part. I think that the pike play specifically like really helped out the team overall. And generally, the 2v2 kill aside, once he did have an advantage in lane, um, regardless if he should have got that first kill or not, he like went mid consistently. And I think when your unicorns are loved, the more people you can put mid around exile, the better your team is gonna mm-hmm. look, you know, to stop him from the 10 0 10 meme, which is definitely justified. Uh, Odo, from you played against him, you had to deal with him roaming all the time. What did it what did it feel like to you? I mean, he was a big part of their win condition because that's just their whole playstyle right now. Even when we we scouted them, we kinda knew what was gonna happen, but we didn't really do much about it. Um yeah, it's just the the whole way they're playing with their both pri- both side prior, and they just abandon bot lane like they abandon Samus to just farm and keep Totoro roaming with cold. So it was really hard to play because they had full control over our bot side once uh, they got rolling from bot lane, and we, at one point they, he was just with cold 24/7, so we couldn't really you know walk into river or anything just because they always had numbers they could they could always just pretty much murder us when we walk into river. So. I think it's kind of justified to say that he's really underrated. I think he was quite bad, you know, when he first came to EU. But after some time now, I think he's really... He has, like, this different playstyle than other supports. He's roaming a lot, but I feel like he gets so much pressure with his robes. That's what it looks like to me. Good to hear that I'm not the only person. Because you totally could have come out and give me a bunch of stuff that I hadn't thought of, and that's always my fear when I call a player... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but then it wouldn't have been fun for the podcast, no? Yeah. Because I mean, you just sit, sit there be. and be like, 
hyperventilating and be like, oh, what's going on? What did also, I do? Also, Totoro and, and like, is not really someone, he's, he's like a happy guy. He's like, I don't know. He's just He's chill. doing well. You don't want to, it's not someone you want, he has like a flamed face, you know what I mean? Like that you want to, like, not yeah. that anyone does particularly. It's not like when, <laughs> Gil, when Gilius does poorly, yeah, you're, you're like, like oh my you, everyone God. wants to jump on that train. But yeah. that's not because Gilius. of his face. He's just, no, 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 it's nothing to do with his face. But you know what I mean? Like the whole, the Totoro is just like sweet guy. It's adorable. It's hard. It's like even if Han Sama was like talking mad shit, like, oh, look at Han Sama, how can you flame him? Yeah. Yeah, but I love it when Gilius flame backfires. <laughs> like everyone is waiting for the for the moment where Gilius flame backfires, so everyone just jumps on him. But I love I love that Gilius commits though. Yeah, I, mean, I love I, Gilius. Yeah. Like he he's really funny and I, he kind of has this a bit of like persona, you know, for the mm -hmm. Twitter bands and stuff, and that's really cool because outside of the outside of the game, he's a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I love it. Like he commits so hard to the trash talk, but, and even when it backfires, the like the fact that he deletes his tweets and stuff is yeah. just so funny. Like I love it. A, yeah, it, I, I think it's yeah. good for EU LCS though to have someone who talks more trash. Because uh, here's the question: When you play against Gilius after he's been talking trash, are you more excited for that game? I mean, not really, because I kind of got used to it, and I know it's part of the show, yeah. but in the back of my mind, it's always like, if I, if I win, he's going to delete his tweets, so I really want to, for him to like, delete his tweets and stuff, because it's just so funny. Can you guys, uh, I missed sort of this, but Maxlor had this tweet that he apologized because he tweeted about Joko when they beat them, and oh, then he was kind of feeling guilty, the, but I, I didn't think it was that bad. Like, I read the tweet, because I had missed some of the context of the game, and I just figured, oh, Misfits probably beat Giants, and then Maxlor tweeted something like, chat get banged, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and then he apologized for it later. So I don't know, maybe the Twitterverse was getting riled up on him and was like, why are you tweeting that when I didn't think it was that bad, to be that honest. That bad. Probably like, Joko, he flames a bit as well. There was so. like a little bit of a trash talk video. I don't okay. know, I think people were too worried, but maybe like Joko yeah. was like really down on it and he didn't want to like... Okay. Okay. Well, that's just nice. Polite. Polite dude, I mean there's a lot yeah, of I mean he's British, so he's, he's like... He's gotta be like really polite yeah. all the time, a little bit uncomfortable yeah, about he it. apologizes yeah. whenever he says a nasty word. That was not the case. That's not, that was that's not the case when he was on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. um, so, Odo, I'd like you to go next. Overhyped, underrated. You can pick either or. Player to talk about. Oh, man. Who stands out to you? Actually, you know, you talk for five minutes about this, and I still haven't thought about an, uh, about an answer on this one. So, Take I mean. Time. I have. Who's on your list? You can short list, or we can go short I mean, overhyped, I can put myself because I'm just. It's the same as the last time I've been on the podcast. Who's, who's hyping you right now, Odo? That's my question. I mean, no one. I mean, people expected me to be a bit better, so I guess I got hyped in that sense, but right now I'm not doing good. But, uh, okay, let's not make it as dark and just let me find out someone. We're going to talk underrated. about you. We're going to talk about you shortly. And you oh, can okay, talk so about I, can, I can just find someone else and you can then find someone else get roasted we'll, we'll after. We'll get to why you're overrated uh, in a minute. I mean... Underrated. I mean, I don't think Bupo is still underrated, but he's kind of doesn't get as much credit as he deserves it's just for the fact that he changed so much of the of fanatics dynamic mm -hmm. even though i think he you know has some issues everyone does but i feel the fact that he came as a rookie and he's doing pretty well he's getting really accustomed to the team so i think he's doing great right now and the fact that he started playing bot lane instead of uh, reckless and he's pulling out you know the pretty much the top lane champions and he's making them work on the on the AD carry role, I think it's uh, it's really impressive. Yeah, I think it's impressive too. Do you think uh, from what you've seen on stage so far, I know it's only two games, but is he a better top laner or a bot laner, do you think, from what you've seen? I mean, I think he's better top laner for sure. It's just that AD carries right now, like th these these guys, when they play solo queue and they have to autofill, they're the worst. <laughs> you know, like if you have a team of five autofill top laners, they're most likely going to smash the autofill AD carries because when these people don't get AD carry, they just stroll out of their minds. So yeah. Is there an now it's kind of coming back to bite them because now when AD carries play against the new champion, they just end and they're like, oh, well, I don't know how to play against this champion. Is there an ELCS example of an AD carry that's particularly difficult in solo queue? Oh, this particularly difficult as an AD carry? No, for sure not. Oh. Like, the, like if if these guys walk into our lane on top lane, they pretty much get murdered by everyone. <laughs> that's just oh, how no, it is. Oh, no, I mean that they're difficult to be in a team with because they're whining if they don't get AD carry. Oh, that's right. what you meant. I thought you were trying to hype someone up, but no. No. <laughs> no. Usually not the case with me. I'm usually I do like that you've asserted your dominance. You're like, no, no LCS AD carry sets foot in my No, I, like, I nobody, mean, it's not only for me through. personally. Like, <laughs> whenever they face any top laner from LCS, all the AD carries are going to get murdered just because they're, <laughs> they're just walking in there and they have no clue what's going on. So, I mean, I don't really have examples. It's just because over the years, everyone whined at one point. It's not really yeah. someone excessively whined about. Yeah. But in general, they're like, 
oh, well, I don't know how to play against this, so what can I do? And then they start inting. So it's kind of, they play too cocky. You know, they think there's six items at minute one and they just walk up and try to hit you and then they get one shot. So I feel like they just don't know the matchups against bruisers and mages and stuff like that. They're just used to playing against someone that can only right click you back. So I think that's why a lot of them have issues right now, just because they don't know matchups and they don't respect it. And it's just, it's, it's different playing against, you know, a bruiser or a mage than an AD carry just because the whole dynamic of the lane is different right now. What do you think that sorry, no, I'm just saying, uh, do you think that uh, you know that some teams are sticking to still picking AD carries and we know it's both viable, but it really depends on your team dynamic as well as the comp you're playing against. But do you think that in general it's people that are more confident in this part of the split as AD carries that are sticking to them, like a Hansama who's definitely on a roll, and that other people I'm thinking of Yarnan, for example, he wasn't really praised in the regular season for doing so well as an AD carry, although he had great playoffs but now he's the guy that is absolutely triumphing and picking these other picks I mean it might be stylistically what what they prefer they might feel more confident in in the picks in the style they're choosing it's just the meta right now just allows you to kind of have these different styles and that's why people are you know looking better at different stuff it's not really I don't see it as you know they fail to adapt or anything mm -hmm. but if it works for them and they feel confident on that it's not really up to me to decide if they're right or not, you know? I just yeah. feel like you can play so, so much different stuff right now that anything kind of works as long as, yeah, if you're good at it. And like, look at Yernan, he's, he's been Heimerdinger one trick pony for like, you know, five years now and- Finally now, pays off. And it finally <laughs> pays off. for this moment. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> So back on the subject of Whipple real quick, you talked about him kind of changing the dynamic of Fnatic. Uh, I want to know what that, what do you mean by that from your perspective? Uh, just because, I feel like AD carries are kind of weak right now, and the picks that he's bringing, like, you know, the, say, Irelia, Darius, or whatever he plays, Swain, all of this stuff, like, Swain, Rise, like, mages and bruisers in the ball lane, it's just, as I said, a lot of AD carries have trouble adapting to playing against those matchups, and since he, he played those champions a lot of time, you know, and we're kind of, we're kind of the top of the food chain in the sense that, I mean, I just feel like top laners, they had to adapt so much over the years to like, you know, lane swap meta pretty much. We had to go through all the phases of the game, all the changes, while ADK just sat there and had the dog next to them and farming 24 seven. And then they were like, oh my God, I'm so strong and I'm so good. So it's kind of easier for us. And I don't mean this in like a cocky way or anything to kind of adapt to, you know, new situations just because Every, pretty much every season or in every patch, top lane gets hit a lot, even in, not even in like solo queue, you know, but competitive wise, when yeah. lane swaps got swapped, it got changed and we had to play through lane swaps a lot. So I think that's just like a skill set that he has, even though he might have not played in, you know, the most competitive team back then when lane swaps were happening and all of this, but it kind of just shows that experience that he can adapt to situations. And I think he's, that's why he's doing so well right now, because it's, a lot easier to play against AD carries, not as you know, as a player, but against the champions of AD carries. Um, what I found really interesting also is that we had this um, video in ELCS, I think it may have been week one, where he talked about, oh, for me, it used to be I came in to Fnatic and I came in and I wanted to learn from SOAS and I would be there and play a couple of games or whatever, but it wouldn't be that I take the main seat immediately. And he was talking about how now, you know, I, I'm not going to go out there and not give it my all because I don't want to be the number two. I want to yeah. be there and play. And how this dynamic between him and Soaz and just in the team had changed. Can you imagine you, like you're a veteran, right? And you've won a lot. You've just been there at, at the main stage for such a long time. How would you think deal with this dynamic of someone first being brought in and then at the end really getting a lot of play time in the end winning the championship kind of without you? How do you think you'd, you'd deal? I mean, it's kind of... It's kind of like two sides of a coin. Um, I, I would be really, I wouldn't really say like disappointed or hurt or anything. I, like I, I would be sad in a way because I'm kind of, Soaz is not really getting slowly replaced, but the fact that people is getting more time just makes Soaz feel, you know, less valuable to the team. And I'll feel probably, like he's getting replaced when maybe he isn't. Yeah, right? like I, I would feel less valuable to the team as well. But on the other side for, for a veteran like me, I would, I think I would feel good in the sense that at times I get kind of too, you know, full of myself or I feel too like overconfident or, you know, no I feel like, touch you. yeah, I feel like I deserve my spot and I should be here and I'm irreplaceable. But sometimes, you know, like a wake up call like that is really good because at times I'm, you know, 
not really struggling, but I'm a bit demotivated with, with things and that kind of, you know, stops my growth. So I would probably be really angry, maybe, if someone comes in and like starts getting more playtime than me. But in the end, I think it would be probably better just because that's going to, you know, spark a, spark a fire again to, for me to kind of pick up my shit and get better, you know? Yeah, and for right now, it's not really a conflict of interest because yeah. both of them get to play, yeah. uh, and we'll see if Reckless comes back into the picture. Just, sorry for oh, yeah, right now it's yeah. perfect. It's just like when, you, when, you're, when you're a kid and you're new on the scene, you, can, you improve a lot, you know? At yeah. that point, you kind of... You don't get lazy or com complacent, but inevitably, your, your, your kind of growth stops. Yeah. So I think something like this is kind of necessary for everyone at one point. Makes a lot of sense, uh, and I'm curious to see how that dynamic continues to grow. Shocks, I want to hit you. Overhyped, underrated. Are you uh, going to mix it up? You're going to give us someone who's overhyped? No, it's d really difficult to think of someone overhyped because I feel like it's uh, about to be week three, and it's hard because I don't think I feel the people who are hyped are are clearly hyped, and they're also in the number one team. So there's really not someone who's I think in between. So I'm going to have to go for underrated, and this might be maybe a cop out or whatever, but. I think Sankux is still a bit underrated. Yeah, that's a good one. And I only say that because he got so much in the past, like last split and before, and even I think on Splice um, in the end, because he was never, you know, he was never a Perks, he was never a Caps, he was never that guy, you know, or definitely not for a longer period of time. I mean, and to be fair, as someone who criticized him a lot, Senkux was really bad for yeah. a long time. Senkux was like the mouse. I mean, if you want to call someone a dog, Senkux was the Mausahar uh -huh. dog. Like, he walked he around was. the guess, yeah. He was behind the CS most of the game. When his champions were good, the Aurelian sold the Mausahar. He did good. And when they weren't, he looked really bad. Really bad. The so, thing that yeah. blew my mind this week and why I'm willing the to get on this train. No? What? The Yasuo. The Yasuo, let's, let's, yes. talk, let's talk about this boy oh, who really? I thought was just like, okay, Aurelian Soul, not the most mechanical champion. Like, pretty simple, slow and steady, mm -hmm. not crazy. And then he pulls out the Yasuo and busts it. And crazy. it's so for me, yeah, Senkux is... Well, I think I because we talk about Hansama so much, right? We, yeah, we yeah. talk about, and I think we should because Hansama is killing it, Max was killing it, that whole team is doing great. But I think he just deserves credit, and maybe we'll have to revise that in a couple of weeks, but I hope this is kind of the click that Senkux uh, needed. And you say it, right? He's not just in the mid lane with an Aurelian Sol. He's picking Aurelia, he's picking Yasuo, he's up in those side lanes. He's taking the 1v1s, and I felt like he, like, mentally, he was more aggressive in a way, and just more confident it felt like in taking the trades, uh, especially on the Yasuo. Yeah. So I think that's a positive evolution. I mean, he should get some credit for that. That looks good. I'm curious, you, Odo, you, you played against them. Uh, that was his Aurelia game. Did you, ex when you looked at Misfits, like let's say last season compared to this season, is it a lot harder to prep now knowing that Senkux is, is doing so well versus last season when he was kind of just a role player, wasn't doing a whole lot? I mean, I guess in a sense because uh Last season and even when he was on Splice, he wasn't really like, you know, this big threat. So uh, you didn't really need to put a lot of attention to, you know, prepping for a good mid lane matchup or something like that. Just because I feel like the meta for him wasn't the best. Like his champions, the meta kind of shifts away from his champions. And I feel like now he's, it's kind of shifting back to something that he's comfortable on. So I, I wouldn't say that he was like, you know, some, a big threat. But I feel like now he's definitely, you know... I don't want to sound mean, but he's not invisible. Like now, he's actually yeah. doing stuff, so he's uh, he's actually doing good for his team, and he he kind of like surprised me as well. You know, for so far the split, I I think he's doing really good, and the way he plays his champions, I feel like they, these are his like comfort champs right now. So I feel like he's pulling out you know good numbers on them. Yeah, I mean definitely. The just in your game alone, he was what eight two eight on Aurelia. He was yeah, popping off. Got the the fourth. Did item. you ever have him on Euphoria? Cheeky BT. No, we didn't. We talked about having him on, and I would like to get him on in the future because he's a good talker and he's, he's an interesting a great talker. dude. But had mm -hmm. Maxlor on first because we were like Maxlor, let's do it. Set some stakes for Misfits. Yep. He put them. He said that they were the Joker on our tier list. We told him he couldn't be a Joker, so he put them. Let me check. B tier. Yeah, they're doing good. Now. I'm surprised. I'm surprised because I actually had Splice as the outside because I did a lot of interviews before the start of the split with some media, and they always ask, you know, who's like, is it going to be Fnatic G2 again? And I said, well, I actually think Splice, and it's still, it can still happen. But I felt like because at the end of the split, you guys were on such a roll, it seemed like you'd finally found your form. Niski was killing it, and then like you lost it all uh, into the split. But I feel like it's something. That that should get built up again. And to be fair, did. if you call them a dark horse, they're definitely more of a dark horse yes. now to win the split at 0 and 4 than they were before. Uh, so let's 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 do it. Let's jump over. Let's talk a little bit about Splice, what's going on, how you're doing. 
Odo on Splice. You guys are 0-4. <laughs> we've been we've been jumping around. Oh, we've been no. joking with you about it a little while. Well, joking maybe at you at your expense a little yeah. bit more than joking with you. You guys um, roasted me, not joked. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. I mean, roasted's good. I maybe. sometimes wonder because we, you know, we're like chilling before the show and talking yeah. and like through a couple of shots left, right, and center. But I, oh, I don't know if the the viewers are like, oh my god, like Drake and Chucks are absolutely shocked. Like, how dare how you? How dare you? This poor boy. He's just a This poor Canadian boy. He's so innocent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's so young. How can they just beat up on him like that? It's not, I can be the guest <laughs> now. You know, I can do it. Yeah, it's, you're you're doing cool. good. But um, actually, yeah, now we're equal, so we can just chat. Yeah, you can whatever you want, man. Throw it at me. Go. Go. So Odo, we've been dancing around it uh, most of the episode, but let's talk about what's actually going wrong on your team right now. You're 0 4 you're tied for ninth place. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. If H2K gets a win, you'll be the sole possession of 10th. Because we play them for this game of next week. This the is battle the... for 10th. We knew that. <laughs> we were ready for that, yeah. We haven't, we're totally prepared for that. That's hype. That makes that game yeah. really that, exciting. That's, that's a real grudge match. Battle for 10th. Who's yeah. going to be last? Odawamne's former team. <laughs> Bad blood. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> uh, time to figure out, I guess, if I made a good decision or not. <laughs> if I'm 10th or 9th. <laughs> An advancement in my career. Okay, uh, let's, uh, well, what's, what, what's actually going wrong? Like, what do, you, what do you think is the issue right now for you guys on stage? How are scrims going? Uh, did you, I guess, let's say, start with this. Did you expect to be 04 based on what you had coming into the season? Uh... I, I guess when when you look at it in the big picture, I didn't really expect to be 0-4. Um, but I mean, it might not be a good excuse, but I think our schedule so far has been pretty rough, just because I feel like we played the top three teams plus you all. Plus you all, yeah. G2, so you guys have played Vitality first, and uh, G2 Misfits, and yeah. You yeah, and I feel like Vitality, G2, and Misfits, at least until this week, were the best three performing teams. Mm -hmm. Well, Vitality kind of dropped the ball this week. Yeah. But it was rough just because we're not really, I feel like, a team right now that can adapt to, you know, cheese super fast. And I don't think what Vitality did was cheese, but I think our side of the scrim bracket, the teams we scrimmed, we kind of like, you know, developed our own meta while Vitality's yeah. bracket developed like a different one. And, you know, in our, in our side of the scrims, the meta was, you know, no Heim or Dinger, not really major sport that much and all of this stuff. So when we went into that week against G2 and Vitality, we weren't really like prepared for like, you know, all these major spots and we kind of got destroyed just because they got both prior so easily and they just kind of snowballed the game super hard. So I think that's the reason why week one was so bad. Um, and week two, I think the Misfits game, we, we kind of just lost super hard mid 2v2 and it just snowballed from there. But I think they didn't really do much to close out that game just because they had such huge leads and they weren't really like that proactive. And I think you all stylistically were just awful against just because we have issues, you know, changing our play style to match theirs and the roaming support and all of that is happening. And yeah, I think with the schedule, we kind of got the four worst teams to play against. And I think if we, you know, the following week, since we have the, I think, matchups that are good for us, yeah. we don't go like, you know, 2-0, or 6 -0 and stuff like this, and we keep losing and stuff, then I think that's going to be, you When's know... it breaking points? 0-4 now, what is like the, oh, we're really in trouble? Because I do agree with you that the strength of schedule, especially in the beginning of a split, yeah. especially with the meta as it is, is, it's not an excuse, but I think you are right in that point. But one, if you go again 0-2 this week, is that then all hands on deck? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I, I feel like not even if we go 0-2, but I think if we don't have a 2 a week this week and we go 1-1 one, one, okay. and then at that point we're 1-5. and five. I think that's a huge, a huge alarm, alarm bell for us. Uh, I think we can't really afford to go 1-1 one, one this week just because, I, yeah, as I said, I think we have good matchups go, coming in for us and I think all the teams that right now are like, you know, 3-1, 2-2, two, two, mm -hmm. they didn't really get to face uh, G2, Misfits and all of this. So that's at the point where they will probably start uh, getting some losses and we just kind of need to take advantage of that and, you know, pick up our wins against the, uh, what we consider the weaker teams, at least. Do you think the time in between the end of the split and now is what made you lose kind of the progress you made that you ha showed in the playoffs or is it the meta? Uh, I don't think I, I don't think we we lost progress that much. I think uh, the the mistakes that we had last split kind of got fixed, and now we're kind of tackling bigger issues. Mm -hmm. uh, I just I just think yeah the the first week was just we couldn't really do much because that's just the 
screen bracket we had. So yeah. the, when you develop a screen meta like that, in imagine we were on the other side of the bracket. You know, if we knew about the mages and all, and all of this. Yeah, like the games might have been different, but when you play with you know double support and the thing is, our our screen, our side of the bracket of the of the screen meta was just uh, the funnel comp with mm. you know supports bot and all of this stuff and G2 kind of played something like that but they played it different where they don't AFK farm as much and the teams that we all played they were just AFK farming you know so they they kind of surprised us surprised us with that you know so it was just really hard to adapt but I think we picked up the ball for second week but yeah. uh, didn't really go that well. Kick it over the line now. So yeah. my question is. Last split, you you guys had a lot of struggles too at the start of the season. I don't. It wasn't 04 bad, but but it was similar things where the team felt like it was learning a lot yeah. of it, and you were just playing those scaling comps. You were perpetually the Maokai player and yeah, these, these Kabi comps, Oof, right? Oof. What, so what's what's different this time in terms of growth? Do you feel like the team is better now than that point? Uh, what's what changes between this underperformance and the underperformance you had at the start of spring? I, mean, I think we're better. Imagine imagine last split coming in. We with our you know zero synergy and stuff. We get to play G2, Fnatic, Vitality, and Misfits, and yeah. we will probably go zero four again. And we would exactly have a copy of like this. But the scheduling like last split was we had you know a really good team and a, a team that was kind of our level. For example, we had something like Fnatic and UOL in the first week mm -hmm. and UOL was kind of like a fight to the death where no one won but we... Basically we, we need to schedule it so you guys have <laughs> really easy matchups in the beginning of the split and uh, then... I mean not... not I mean it happens two times in a row. I mean, I mean Splice is like as a team in an org always does bad at the start yeah. of the split. Like historically I don't think they've ever had a good start You have start really bad goal difference. Also it's like you lose and you lose really hard in the early game and it, it does, I think it's kind of a testament to the fact that you guys are able to develop. Because it's a clear developing line, like the whole game. It's just like, I don't know. I'm a bit sad because I, I yeah. want you guys to do well. I think you have great qualities. I think you really found your form. And I think you have to aspire to play a final and definitely make it to Worlds. I think that's like, yeah. that would be an absolute failure if you don't Yeah, it, right? I mean, I, I missed Worlds last year and I really uh -huh. wanted to go, you know, Worlds every year of my career. So I'm really sad about that. And if I don't make it this year, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be even worse. But... I think yeah, like I think we're progressing. Uh, I think every every week of scrims we kind of get better, and it's just this is, I I don't want to sound like this guy that just blames it on schedule, but mm. yeah. I mean now it's up to us to kind of back it back the statement up, you know, and pick up wins against. So you know, two zero a week weeks. or bust. That's what we heard. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. H two K Rockat. So you're right. You're yeah. right. That may be a good time to get a two zero. They're week. both tricky though. They can be really. Well, I mean, Rockat's two two. H two K is down there in the bottom. So fight fight at the bottom of the bracket uh, on Friday there. A dog fight. Yes. <laughs> so I'm curious about that. Speaking of, of dogs, you haven't had to play. Only tanks. Well, actually, it looks like pretty much only tanks just about <laughs> yeah. the time. You got one Aatrox game. Uh, Which I was kind of spectating that game. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit. So, actually, yeah. So, interestingly, I want to talk to you about your role in the team right now. Because one of the things, you did an interview with the Players' Lobby, or you wrote an article, actually, with the Players' Lobby, talking about kind of, like, your sense of fulfillment and, like, satisfaction in your career. And one of the things you talked about, about was new patches and, like, this, like, hunger to learn new patches. And so, when I read that, now I look at your team performance where you guys are, like, really struggling to adapt. Um, do you just do you still feel like you have that like when you see a new patch when there's a new top lane meta that you're the kind of guy that like wants to dive in wants to learn absolutely everything about this top lane meta and it, that's like a really exciting thing for you. I mean, it still is. You know, even if uh, all the champion, all the new champions I learn, I, we don't pull them off in scrims on stage, I still kind of get this you know sense of satisfaction that I get to learn them. Uh, I think this patch has a lot of new top lane champs that most of them are kind of like niche picks that only work into one or two picks, so you don't really get to pick them that freely. It's just that this meta is kind of like blind pick stop a lot. That's why, you know, randomly blue or purple side just locks in Mundo, you know? Because <laughs> uh, it's just in this meta, yeah, you can't really afford, you need to kind of counter pick or flex as much as you can. So mm -hmm. if you don't pick something that counter picks or you have like flex on three positions, then it's kind of bad. So yeah, I mean, I hopefully we pull out like new, less tanks in the top lane because whenever we lost in LCS and I played Orn and stuff like that or Mundo, it's kind of disappointing, you know, because yeah. it's like, it looks really bad because your team is losing, so the tank can't really do anything, so he looks awful, but if you're winning, then the tank looks insane, you know, because yeah. he you just can't die. So, yeah. so like, that's why, you know, tanks on winning teams have like KDA of 20 and on losing teams they have like, 
negative three or whatever. Because <laughs> so, it's just like that. You, you don't really have the ability to influence, you know, uh, as a tank unless the game is 50-50. If like the game is even, then you can team fight well and all of this stuff. And if you're slightly behind, but if you get smashed like we did, then uh, I, I can't really get to do much on tanks, especially because most of the games, you know, by the time I get out of laning phase, then the game is already kind of well, over. And so I mentioned earlier before we went live that I had some fun facts for you. But so we always say that top lane is an island and people are left alone. So Odo, are you familiar with how jungle proximity works? So yeah. Three to fifteen minutes within two thousand range. You had zero percent jungle proximity this week. Really? Both of your I mean, games. That's lovely. You and, and let's be clear here: jungle proximity is like an almost perfect stat, but mm -hmm. has a couple issues. Literally, if Zerse is near you when he's doing Krugs as you walk back to lane, you will get jungle proximity. <laughs> if he walks near your corpse when you are dead, he will get jungle proximity. proximity. So getting zero is actually very hard. This is an avoided <laughs> your lane like the plague. Is, that, is there something you want to tell us? Or are you not getting along? Like, is what the, is going on? Now we've on broadcast once or twice. Maybe over tried to, to talk about how yeah. you guys are like Romanians together, the duo. Yeah, the duo. It's great. <laughs> is the duo, duo dead? Like, is this a plan to leave you completely alone and isolated on the top lane, or, or is, is that it just unnecessary? Is it just right the nature to to of the meta? Lane, What's or? going on? I mean, I think that's just our choice to how we want to. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. I, I'm just so gonna, another I, perspective. Five games in your entire career in the LCS. So five out of 252 games you've played with zero over jungle proximity. Over your entire career, two of them were this week. Did something happen? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, man. Uh, I, I just feel like that was kind of what we, what our plan was, you know, for this week to just play through, through bot or med, but yeah, I, I don't really get the... Uh, That's your plan for this year? But I just, I'm surprised because, like, okay, to have a plan for a year, one, sounds a bit extreme, so, two, you were complaining in spring already that you couldn't, because like I remember, because we talked and, after and, like and week play, four yeah. when you guys were winning with these like horrendously boring for you as a top lane yeah. team fight comps where you play Maokai every game, and you finally were like freed from dog duty. You got like yeah. a TF mid, you got to play Camille top. Uh, is this just the way that you guys have to play now where you're permanently a tank? I mean, <sighs> <laughs> you just look so sad. I'm sorry, man. I know this is tough. I know you like want yeah. to be yeah. free. I, I don't so want to, like, of course, you guys I mean, have a plan, I, but. I mean, that's kind of like, you know, in, in screens it works better than that. Uh, it's just in the past I played with uh, little to no jungle help, and yeah. I'm fine with it. But it, it just uh, it just kind of feels bad, man. When you know when you get no jungle help, and the thing is, I feel like I can do a lot if I get like you know my share of jungle help, and you know we do some invades or play around top side top side a bit, or I get to play some carries. Like yeah. the, the thing that like saddens me the most is. Uh, that zero jungle proximity game was when I actually played Aatrox and that champion is really busted. And I was just, you know, spectating that game. I was just sitting and pushing a wave and looking at the map. Well, that's and a lane where you're against a Mundo and if you get like one gank, you just instantly yeah, take over Yeah, pretty much. Like you can, you can dive him, you can, you can make plays, you can <coughs> influence the map. And, and to be fair to, to Zerse, like a lot was going wrong that game. That was the yeah. game where your bot lane <coughs> got 2v2 killed, right, and taken down. But still bless brutal you shocks. Thank to you. get. That's yes, great. bless yeah. you, shock. Oh, <laughs> bless you, shock. Wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna comment on it. All right, no, fine. Okay. Do you want to? Is there anything else? Should we? No. You stop. You good? Let's go you ahead. Need a tissue. Just need anything sneeze. else? No. Okay. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I I understand why he wouldn't pay attention to top, but it is interesting that it's like so clear. If I can interject, like. Yeah. I saw an Orn solo killing a Mundo. It is possible. Was it what game was that? That was Visachachi versus Wonder. Visachachi killing Wonder. Wonder. That was no, the game. Wonder killing. No, no, no. Was Wonder, it? Wonder, Wonder killing Visachachi. Oh. And that was the game where low key Visachachi entered. Oh. Uh, he really he, what's up he with ran that? it down. Why is, well, I, yeah. So we talked to him about that afterwards and he said he just wasn't he wasn't super comfortable in the matchup and that showed cuz the next day he smashed lane, right? Like yeah. the the matchup versus Wonder he got smashed in that. So it seems like he just wasn't as comfortable in the matchup. And uh, he acknowledged that, like, the second he didn't flash, uh, he was dead. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, that's, wow, that must feel bad, man, because he's a really good player, right? Yeah. And I, like, yeah. Why? Well, and that's, I mean, for Schalke, especially, just to go on a sidetrack, that sucked because they, like, had a good game plan. And yeah. then when individual members collapsed completely, the game yeah. plan kind of I mean, that's that just kind of his problem because he's stylistically a really aggressive player. Mm. And that matchup is just, you, you can't win. No matter how good you play uh, in Mundo against Don, you, you can't win. You, all you have to do is just farm and. Wait for laning phase to end, and you just farm jungle counts 24 7 and you just run around the map and throw some cleavers. And it goes but against his nature, probably. Yeah, so. No, I'm gonna take the So, trade. legit, you can't walk up to trade with Thorn. You just have to sit max range and throw Q for 20 minutes until you get out of lane. That's just. 
how it goes and you pray for team fights. So yeah, the fact that he tried to trade is just kind of why he died. He was, this was a silent protest against the against top laners. Against dog champs. Yeah. <laughs> dog champs. Um, as, to continue on the, the subject of your team, uh, how is team morale? Because I know you were disheartened, we mentioned this already at spring. You don't sound super great right now. You're joking and you're laughing. I'm glad you're having a good time. But like, do you guys, are you guys confident you can turn this around? How is it from this like a mental standpoint? This is a depressing podcast, by the way. Like, yeah. it's so I, mean, I, feel, sad I feel like whenever I'm on the podcast, Odo. it gets different. But okay, in my defense, you guys always call me when uh, I am anything or my team is anything. <laughs> well, I mean, it just happens pretty often. <laughs> like, it's not. Uh, true. We could. <laughs> I want to clip that face and just have that. It's like an emote. He's forever. really good at that. The it, I mean, I usually don't feel bad about like you know. I mean, you guys some flame. <laughs> you guys, like, no. guys crushed it in playoffs. We'll get you. We'll get you in playoffs exactly. when you guys are on the up and up this time. I promise we will have a happy BS yeah. Odo podcast where we get to. They'll talk get about you, you if Reckless and Perks aren't available. Oh. They'll be like, Odo, do you want to go? Because we have. <laughs> <laughs> No. I'm just blaming them. Oh, okay. That's perfectly fine, I guess. Yes. Okay. Just kidding. Talk to me about team morale. So, like, are, are, is the team feeling good? Or are you guys worried? Uh, How is I mean, it? as I said, we were kind of collectively wailing. And, yeah. uh, well, not really wailing. There wasn't, like, any sound. We were, like, ooh, you know, crying out loud. But uh, we were really, <laughs> we didn't expect all four. And, yeah, I mean, everyone kind of knows that the schedule is bad. And we can't really afford to just mentally FF, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because it's kind of summer split and we need to kind of pick up the ball. And if we if we decide to just FF like this, then this whole split and year is just doomed for all of us. So <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to laugh. But <laughs> there was a fly on my face. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were laughing. I just saw his face, so I couldn't uh, hold myself. But I mean, it's better already just because I mean, everyone wants to, we, we want to get out of this hole, you know, because we kind of yeah. dug it our own. And I, I think we're going to manage to pick it up again and have a good week. But yeah, I mean, morale isn't too bad. It was really bad after we lost because we couldn't believe that we're all for. Yeah. I mean, I think Spice fans, though, want to hear that you're like rallying. You know, you can turn it around. This is the week where you're going to go 2-0. I like that. I like to hear that. Uh, the other thing that you guys have on the agenda coming up, uh, Riff Rivals. Oh, oh yeah. Damn. As the number three team, uh, and I think that's the number one thing I see mentioned in your post match threads by people who are concerned is like, splice at Riff Rivals. What's going to happen? So, from your perspective, I know the team is struggling right now. Do you guys feel like you can take down some of these NA teams? I mean, what is it? Again? Sorry, uh, so it's Riff Rivals team Liquid, is Hundred Thieves, Team Liquid, and, and uh, Echo Fox. Echo Fox. Boom, yeah. playing against Proly. Yeah. Yes, so actually, nice. why, we'll just get a Twitter question in here because someone asked this question for Batum, and I don't want to steal it for them. So for Odo, are you Yankos and Kasing excited to be reunited with Proly and Ryu at Riff Rivals? And are you ready to show them <laughs> the EU is greater than an A? Yeah. Like, when we qualify for Riff Rivals, that was one of the biggest reasons I was so excited, not really, I mean, I love competing uh, internationally and stuff, but getting to play against Proly and his team is kind of uh, a feels good man. Because uh, yeah, like, I think Jankos as well, uh, and me and Kasing, we really want to just uh, smash, him sm smash his team and put him <laughs> on the ground for just leaving us. And I think we can, I think even um, at, pre at, pre at previous Rift Rivals, when uh, P1 came to EU and they were like ninth in LCS, kind of yeah. the same as us right now, uh, and they kind of like kicked the ass of some EU teams, and I, I think we're not as bad as our uh, uh, okay. thingy standings are yeah. right now. Um, yeah. Like scrims are going well, and I think yeah, these teams were just way better than us. But I think once we get there, uh, obviously I, did, I didn't really scout them that much, the NA teams, but. Stylistically, they might be okay for us. So I don't think we're like that bad that we just FF every early game and we get like stomped like that. But I think, yeah, standings won't really matter. I think it's just if we manage to get into good form for it, we should be fine. All right, most excited for the 100 Thieves matchup. You said you haven't looked at them too much, but do you feel, is EU looking better than last Rift Rivals? So hard to say, because we were so confident. Fnatic was insanely hyped, <laughs> right? They, they were going to smash everyone and then they, <laughs> I mean, and we in EU, I remember we were like, oh, the cannon, it's working here, but it might come to an end, and then it just got completely exposed. Is there 
Like you can't get exposed. You can only do better, which I think this might be really good for you guys because this could be if you're gonna even, be like, even, even if you go O2, even if you go O2 this week, which I don't think you will, if you go there and oh, if you put on a good performance, that'll be insane. <laughs> that'll be such an uplift. All the community will be happy, and that's that yeah. Everyone's gonna helps. be like rank, rank ten EU better than yes, rank whatever. It's all a plan. This yeah. is it. They they just want to go there as a tenth place team and like absolutely smash. Yeah, yeah, so the NA, NA fanboys just uh, dig their hole and hide them. They cry. They cry. <laughs> <laughs> they cry. You're going to be the dark horse. You're going to be the ninth place team at, at Riff Rivals. We're yeah. going to be the P1. You're going to be yeah. the P1? You're yeah. going to be the Mike Young of this tournament there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Show and play carries every game? Stomp yeah. people? Maybe I, I'm uh, off my tank duty. Ooh, that would be exciting. But will EU win Riff Rivals? Wait, there's a winner? Yeah. Yeah, EU will win. Oh, EU will win. oh yeah, EU is, win. EU Why do you think you're going? Is this a scrim tournament? It's, no, they, they're going to get you a win. You've got to go, man. This is going to be exciting. And they okay. won last year, so anyway. Yeah. We need to win this year, especially on NA's home turf. Yeah. Hit them with the disrespect. And I'm sure, because the thing is, on broadcast after this stuff, last year, NA got to dance in, like, Canada and America suits. <laughs> We're gonna have to get you like a Belgium suit. Perfect. I don't know what I'm gonna wear because I'm like a uh, traitor. Yeah. So I, we're gonna need to find something special. Actually, on that one, because yeah, we're in NA. Because uh, one of my biggest regrets was the fact that we didn't get to play C9 when mm -hmm. I was at Walls and just uh, murder them in NA. So yeah. I guess it's time to do it. Uh, yeah, at this Rift Rivals. No C9, Rift no, Rivals. But you can, yeah. you can murder But some, some, uh, some other NA team, so that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Echo Fox, Pretty you can stuck. take out Hooney and get some. Long -term yeah, I mean, for I mean, Huni is a, is a really fun matchup because I always felt like I was doing really well against them, but then his dog would show up in the lane every 30 seconds and then I didn't really have a shot, you know. Now he and his new dog, which who they call Dardock, sorry Dardock. Dardock. But actually, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they man. swap sometimes, yeah, so you yeah, could I play might, Dardock. I might play against like, you know, Adrian Top or something like that. That, that would be really disappointing. Like, I, I would feel bad. Maybe even if you lose, you can take cute pictures with puppies, uh, apparently. Because the new player pictures of NA LCS, they have like a Zales dog, I think. It's like the cutest dog you've ever seen. But and they, for some reason, it, have the dog. Well, it's like, sometimes I'm like, oh, NA, what are you doing? And then I'm like, that's such a good oh, idea. Oh, NA, what we are you doing? Have, okay, look, we look over there. We should have cute animals. Yeah, look at those cute oh, animals. We yeah. do have cute animals. Yeah, yeah. yeah look, look at those puppies. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, so I do want to round out this place discussion. Um, let's talk a little bit about predictions. You have to play H2K gaming, and Raw Cat this week. You're, are you predicting a 2-0 week? Are you confident in a 2-0 week? Because you said you need a 2-0 week. Yeah. But you um, believe in the 2-0 week. I mean, I believe in the 2-0 week. Um, I, as I said, yeah, if we don't go 2-0, then it's really, really bad for us. But I think these teams over, you know, last split, they weren't really like a big threat to us. I feel like we matched really well against them. And I think anything else in a 2-0 is a really big failure for this week. Hmm. Great. Have to. Like, not agreed, think, not agreed in terms that these teams are, I think Rockat was great. I think HUK can definitely have their moments. Uh, we saw the turnaround they did last split. And Rockat, Memento was an absolute monster, you know, the, sure. uh, this weekend. So I think it's, there's definitely more caveats than just, oh, we'll beat them because we should on paper. But, yeah, I agree that you should go 2-0. Yeah, it, it, this has to be the, the research. I mean, if you want to be a top team, then we have, yeah. to, we have to go 2-0 this week. I mean, week. both Rocket and HK were playoff teams in the end, right? So. Yeah, yeah. but they're going to go 3-0. Uh, no, HK, uh, yeah. HK. And, no, and Rocket was Yeah, they were both playoff teams. Yeah, but they go 3-0 with us. Yeah, they did. Yes, and... But, okay, so talk to me about how you match up against Profit then, because that's my thing. Is I'm not, I, I believe you can be H2K, for sure. Uh, Rockat, not as convinced right now, because while, yes, their mid-game looked like utter trash against Vitality, and they threw a giant lead that they shouldn't have after Memento got so fed, uh, their late game looked good with Profit on Vladimir. So how do you feel about that matchup specifically? I mean, I'm not really too worried. I feel like even in the, you know, the game where he was on Vladimir and he was, like, carrying every single fight, I feel like his play was good, but... The items he was building were really, you know, troll. Because <laughs> it was like 30, 40 minutes in game and he had 200 AP on Vlad and he was 1v5-ing instead of having like 600 if he went like a proper build, you know. So I'm not really too worried about like facing him. I don't think he's like, you know, this insane laner or whatever. Yeah. Like, for example, who is it? Like, Wander. Yeah. Like, if I would play Wander, then I would probably, you know, feel like I need to do my best you know, and just we're going to have like a good good, uh, a good game in the top lane, but I might sound cocky and yeah, I am Africa. cocky in a way and yeah. I feel like he's not really, you know, this big threat. 
Okay. So then, if you I mean, I'm not going to take him lightly, you know, but I don't, I don't feel like he's, you know, at the level of Wonder or someone that goes like toe to toe to me every game. Are you worried at all if like he gets a pick like Vlad, which has been a signature pick for him, and you're stuck on some kind of tank <laughs> that you're um, not going to be able to have the same level of influence in a game that he is? So that even if let's say that you're the better player, you yeah. perform better, but he just gets to that point where Vladimir does more as a champion, that you're just not going to be able to have the same impact. Yeah, that that's going to be if he gets Vlad, then yeah, I'm gets stuck on some, like most of the time tank get out killed against Vlad. Uh, so it's all kind of up to me in you know early game to do stuff on my tanks, but yeah, hopefully like uh, the draft for top side won't be you know looking too bad. So situations like that where I get outskilled and I'm irrelevant compared to him doesn't really happen. All right. Well, I'm actually I'm gonna predict for Rocket. <laughs> I think you're gonna go one five. You're I think you're gonna a, be you HK. You want to be Venus, you are. No, I'm not. No, I don't want to be Vettius. Please don't. Please don't. This is not a diehard love for Rocket. This is me not being 100% convinced yet, and my biggest concern is that we'll have a I mean, that's fair. We have a rinse and repeat of the Vitality game where, ignoring the fact that Rocket got ahead, they just get to it, they build a late game comp, and that you guys, with your struggles right now, can't close a game, and you just end up against a a Vlad and Aurelia in a late game team fight, and even if they were doing nothing up until that point, they just, uh, they roll over the top, top of you. Now that said, since we're different, Odo, you know what this means. You've been here before. <gasps> it's Better. a bet. It's a bet. Okay, so we did dog costumes last time. I'd feel okay. bad now. What What do you think we should bet this time? Oh, you don't have one already? I don't have one. No. <laughs> the fish show is gone. It's the fish like, show is gone, and it's disaster. instantly disaster. Do you he have any ideas the off the bets. top of your head? The Does loser it? has to learn how to do a backflip. That's, no, that's that so inc- hard. That you can't. I mean, that's the also not like. I feel like it's just bet. hard because you don't know how to do it. Man, Tyler wanted the f-ing backflip. Well, how about just a cartwheel? A, a good cartwheel. Cartwheel. Okay, I feel like that's harder than a backflip. No, it's not. You won't, like. It's definitely not. You, you have to spin right sideways instead of like. No, no, the backflip. No, you it's have, much like, easier. I, like, yeah, yeah, but it's like you know this. You, have to be on gymnastics, so you have to. Okay. No, because I think. I used to do gymnastics, actually, uh, and dance. And like the the backflip, I think, is much harder to learn because it's also about being afraid to fall yeah, back, and then you have terrifying. to pressure yeah. legs That's up. How I think learn. cartwheel is easier because you can do a crappy cartwheel. If you do uh, a I'll crappy backflip, you, you break your back. But backflip is more impressive. Here's, here's like cartwheel that is, is kind of This isn't cartwheel. Isn't that is, but it's much more safer. And so what I'd yeah. like to do is I'd like to up the ante here. Oh. Okay. I'd like for you, if if uh, if I'm wrong. I will come on the LCS show or filmed off the LCS show and be put on the LCS show. I will do the cheerleader pom poms and I will make up a splice cheer. But if you lose, you have to make up a euphoria cheer or we'll make it up for you and you have to get e- euphoria <laughs> colored pom poms ending with a cartwheel. With the cartwheel. Wow. So pom poms, cheer, cartwheel. cartwheel. But your, your side wasn't doing a cartwheel. Yeah, you're not... No, really... I'll do a cartwheel too. I'll do a cartwheel too. Oh, cartwheel yeah, for either of us. The bet is basically, loser oh, has to cheer. I'll even do... We doesn't even have to splice cheer. I'll cheer for Oda Wamne. For tanks. For tanks. Whatever you want, dude. You lay it down. You just need like some green pom-poms and like... Green pom-poms, like, let's army, go tanks, army helmet. cartwheel. I'll, t- I'll Is that guys. sufficiently embarrassing? That's the question. Yeah, cartwheel the key is here, difficult. The key here is embarrassment. Is it? I know you think that like, he thinks cartwheels are. I'm not saying easy. you have to successfully cartwheel. No, I'm you saying have you have to cartwheel. attempt in front of a large <laughs> and audience. Cheer and, and you said cheerleader costume, right? I didn't say cheerleader costume. Yeah, I heard that. Did you? No. Do you I want definitely heard that. It's up to you. I mean, we need to make it as embarrassing as possible because, like, if I if I win, I really However, want it to be embarrassing. You can't like be wearing a skirt and doing no, a you cartwheel, do, you guys. You have to do tights. You just do like tights yeah, and a tights, skirt. Yeah, tights, tights, and just like a top or something. But you need like good makeup. <laughs> like girly pink. I spit at that. So you're gonna put on girly pink? Why did you say that? What? No, no, I was just like laughing. Okay, That's... you know you're up in the stakes here. Okay, so yeah. are you down for this? I mean, if we're gonna clown ourselves, they might as well go all the way now. <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. Okay. Okay, so you, we need like good makeup, like, you know, pink, Oh, red. no. We have, we have fantastic makeup artists. Okay. We will get... Get some lipstick going. Can I Lips? coach cartwheel? You can definitely coach thinking? cartwheel. Okay. Actually, why, why am I? Why am I? Wait, wait, wait. Like, wait. Like, him. He's like, let's do this, and you're like, okay. And he's like, no, that's words. But also, let's do this and this and this and this. Yeah. And this. Like, I mean, so I, I need to brace myself. Self-inflicted. Cheer, cheerleader outfit. Makeup. Cheers with pom poms. Full makeup. Full cheerleader this outfit. This feels like seven different bets. And a bets. cartwheel. Yeah. All in one. But that's so good, no? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this is fine. But then all the NA people are gonna be like, oh my god, you has so weird humor. Herder. 
I mean, Kobe, see, like, Kobe we... wore a dress. Sneaky does cosplay all the time. I think Very we're fine. Impressive, by I think the way. we're fine. People can be uncomfortable. That I'm not even gonna say anything about Rocket, those cosplays. Rocket versus Splice. Yeah, Splice wins. I'm a cheerleader. You I do a cartwheel. Lose. Actually, when we do a cartwheel with the skirt on, you're gonna wear tights. Probably, we're gonna wear yeah, tights. tights. Yeah, but like the skirt is gonna go upside down. It's gonna yeah, yeah which is why you're gonna we wear tights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not a kill, dude. We're not. <laughs> no. What are we gonna have pompons in our hands while we do the cartwheel? Well, I think you can put them down to do the cartwheel. We cool. can figure out the logistics. I mean, later. We, we can we can have them with like. In our we'll hands. figure it out. It's good. Yeah. I mean, that's fine. Rock ever splice Saturday. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be awful. This is gonna be terrible. For you. It's gonna be oh great. yeah, you, you think I'm gonna be dressed up like a cheerleader? Of I mean, you've already been a dog. Are you, are you gonna be a cheerleader? Man, you were so lucky with that one. Like, <laughs> imagine going against me and the Fisher and actually winning. That's true. It was good too, because that was the week that Soaz broke his hand. So Soaz wouldn't have been able. To, I would have felt really bad if we had to go to like Soaz's house with a dog cost and be like, "Hey." But he could have been like wimpy, so, you know. No, I think a cartwheel. So I been know worse. you're not playing playoffs, <laughs> but here's this dog costume. Can you put this on? We do have to be careful with the cartwheel. Not that you say it, because it is. It could be. Everything could be intense. Everything that's intense physically, what, I'm always careful will, for the players. I will promise. Yeah, we might have to find match or something. Yeah. What I will promise. 100% assuming that we get everybody on board is cheerleader outfit, cheerleader makeup, and cheer with cartwheel as the bonus. Yeah, I bonus. can definitely do a cartwheel. You yeah, is you... pending safety because obviously <laughs> if you hurt yourself. Yeah, pending safety, I think. Because I'll agree to that because that's fair. Because if I hurt my wrist, no one cares. If you hurt your wrist, yeah. well. I'll do it for him if you. You don't have a whippo right yeah. now, so there's no, there's no backup out of Wamne for this place. I mean, I can learn to do a backflip. I can break my legs. Or my neck. Break your Stop. neck, yeah. Whatever you do in your free time is your own business. We yeah. didn't encourage you to do It feels like he here. secretly tr like, knows how to do I, a backflip. No, I don't. I just I like, really I want to show you to. guys. I That's finally. Right. I was trying to get both of them. Okay, so that's our bet. We have the cheer. I'm just going to call it the cheerleader bet for short. Sure. The specifics we'll find later. The last thing we have to do today is, is Twitter questions. We already answered one from uh, Cultured Lamnid. I do want to go with uh, a few more. Uh, starting with you, Shox. <gasps> You had some intense questions. Yeah, people yeah. people get fired up. Yeah, so this is <laughs> good. this is one from it's good. It's good. at Duncan Wat or so Duncan Watson at Duncan it's underscore be Duncan Shields, Watson. Like, holy. G -G. <laughs> Foreign <laughs> asks. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fries with ketchup, mayo or mixed? What? Yeah. These, <laughs> yeah I, okay, we're gonna get a hard hitting question. Fries with ketchup, mayo or mixed? Uh, well, I love mayo. Uh, some people may know this. Oh. I just love mayo. Belgians love mayo in general, but uh, fries you, like, with mayo. mayo from a jar or something? Yeah, I used to. I, that one, you one, you know, to. We weren't getting paid that well yet, so I was just like eating mayo from the jar what? for dinner. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh my god. <laughs> we were never on mayo salaries. <laughs> that's no, a that's, uh, yeah. no, this is like five years ago when it, it was just resting on my table, and uh, yeah, I just really like mayo. However, um, we do have, we call it cocktail sauce, mm. which is ketchup and mayo mixed with uh, anything that has mayo, I'll, I'll have it. Odo, your preference? Fries, uh, ketchup, mayo, mix, mustard? You want to get weird? Just ketchup. I, just ketchup. I, I'm not a big fan of mayo. I did try cocktail sauce once, and it wasn't too bad, but uh, mm. I'm going to stick with comforting or ketchup. I used to actually but hate yeah. mayo until I came to Belgium in 2015 Worlds, and now I eat mayo with all of my fries. Nice! From a sometimes, jar. sometimes mix, never from a jar. Uh, mm. make it yourself. I've dipped it from in a jar before when it was at the end of the jar, and I was just, you know, yeah. gotta get out with the fry. And then, like, the old meal was, like, all the way up to your. Well, no, that's why I had the fry, right? So that it uh. wouldn't wouldn't have to get in there. Oh, I thought it was, like, one of those big jars, like Shok said. Yeah, I was just sticking my hand in Odo and just <laughs> yeah, wiping just, it on the fries. Just. <laughs> wipe it everywhere. <laughs> covering myself. I, I do have to say, like, I've been trying to. Uh, Pay attention to what I eat a bit, and mayo is actually the first thing that has to go because it's just—it's like fat. That's uh, like yeah. against your identity as a Belgian. It's really though, bad. It? So yeah, I'm trying to eat some hummus here or there, tzatziki, but I'm like, where's my mayo? Isn't hummus also not super? No, it's not great. It's also pretty <laughs> fatty, but it's healthier. <laughs> I think it's healthier. Um, Odo, we had one question. I want to pull the person who got it, but I just want to have you start on it. But people have been asking for an updated dog champ tier list. Now I don't want to go into the whole thing. But I do want to know where Mundo rates on the dog champ tier list. Uh, where do you see him? Wait, how did we do it? Was S tier like the big, like the, the biggest, best, the, like the, the biggest, biggest dog, dog for the worst dog? So like the one that you would hate, like only was a tank, had no fun in lane, literally sat there and waited for team fights. Uh, okay. Well, Mundo's kind of fun, so I put him towards the bottom. Like the biggest dog is still Maokai, obviously. Like he's never gonna be not the biggest dog. Uh, so I guess yeah, the biggest dog is still Maokai, and but where but Mundo 
is is the one that I want to know because he's the new the new tank. Yeah. In the top lane. There's actually a lot of people who ask this question, by the way. <laughs> Finding the exact dude is, is I difficult. mean, I would say like Estir, his biggest dog is Mundo, and then you have stuff like Sand that's not really played. Uh, I guess let's say B tier is Orn because you can actually do stuff and he's not that useless. And I would say Mundo is like better than Orn right now. So he's probably like C tier. So he's like the least, the, the, the dog he... closest to the carry. Mm. Okay, but why? But now I'm curious why, because you told me that uh, in lane, you just have to sit back and let Orn do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah, but that's just the matchup against Sona. But for example, if you play the dog champ Mundo against the carry, then you can win that matchup. So you can actually just, it's like, you know, the kitties are the cats in the dog. Even though he's like a <laughs> tiny dog that's just like chihuahua and he's like, Wah. he's just gonna like go and chase the cats Sound away. I really made that, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna give credit to this Twitter question from Klaus V. Reinhardt's. I probably butchered your name, apologies for that. At Elax Law. Uh, a lot of people asked it though, so uh, thank you for the, the quick update on the, on the status of dog champions. Last question around us out of shock. So this one was actually really interesting. Dog ambassador here. You are the dog ambassador. We appreciate you. We have a sapling. We have a picture of you in a dog costume. We will title you the dog ambassador whenever you're on yeah. the podcast now. <laughs> um, Eric Edberg, at Edberg Eric, asked, uh, which pro player do you want to interview that you haven't done with? No language barrier between you and the pro player. And I would like to extend this to even pro players that you have interviewed, if you could just erase yeah. a language barrier and interview someone, uh, whatever language you're most comfortable with, like who would you want to sit down and have like that long, mm -hmm. super deep dive interview? Well, with? no surprise to anyone, Faker probably, uh, yeah. just because, I mean, I think uh, I've interviewed a lot of people over uh, the course of a couple of years, and Odo was just bringing this up that like I haven't interviewed that many EU LCS players in the last two years because we've I've been on Only the desk worlds, and we've yeah. had. Uh, dedicated interviewers, and we had Lor coming in, and, um, and we do get to do PGL, but that's different. Yeah, it's a I do different. miss the kind of one on one. You can just get a bit funny and loose, and like it's a chill little setting. You can yell for Wakanda at the end of it, so it's kind of it's different. You can come I miss in and it. kiss players miss randomly. It. Some free advertising, some free <laughs> Twitter followers for uh, Kasim. Uh, but I do have to say that um, you know it, it took a while for me to get comfortable with translated interviews because I think yeah. it is a totally different breed, and I think. Uh, over the years, it's worked better, but you do have to. People sometimes say, "Oh, your questions like they were too, they're like too simple and too standard and stuff like that." And I do often agree, but there's a lot that goes into it because you can't just go into an interview and ask like a three-layered question that then has to be translated and you use like, um, you know, an idiom that's that's yeah. in English that has to get translated as you can do in in English interviews. Yeah. And obviously, you're not as close. With uh, when there's a language barrier, but in English you kind of you vibe, you know, and you see the players every week, and it's different. So I think there's a lot that comes into play and that gets lost in international interviews. And I've been trying to; it's been an active goal of mine to have it be more funny, you know, and just have that get that humor come through and let the players be more of themselves. But it is difficult with the language barrier, although it's been getting better. I think Faker is, is an example how through the years he's just gotten more comfortable in interviews as well. Um, like the Korean and Chinese players in general uh, have been more chill, LMS players as well, so we'll see. Maybe yeah, Faker's the easy answer. I would just yeah. love to sit down with any of these guys that I've interviewed a couple of times or a lot in Korean um, or in any other language and just, I don't know, just vibe, you know? Yeah. It would be awesome. Maybe Feel one day. Out. Maybe one day. If you could, if Shox is interviewing Faker and it's gonna be, you can ask, no hold barred, ask any question to Faker you want, what would you ask, Odo? If he wants to 1v1 on Ramos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, <laughs> no but uh, honestly, I mean, I don't know. I don't really look up to him that much. I mean, he's insane, but mm. I mean, that's just him at this point, so he's nothing really like. You I think mean, it's normalized. They've not got yeah. so used to him being insane, it's just kind of normal nowadays. I know. Yeah, I mean, for me, it wasn't even like he's insane. I just want to know how he feels about playing Tarek, like what's yeah. going on in the oh, background yeah, that, of this that's team. A good one. Like, yeah. what the hell what is going is on going with on SKT? Yeah. yeah, how does it feel to play Tarek? That's a good question. <laughs> exactly. That's the ultimate dog yeah. change right there, dude. True. It, I we're going to have to make a new tier list for Final Comps yeah, you, specifically. You know, I thought you can't be a bigger dog than Maokai, but if you have to play support for your mid laner <laughs> or for your jungler, then you are the biggest dog. Especially now, if you're faker. To be fair, after years on H2K, Yankos finally knows how you play, how you feel being stuck on Braum. Yeah, every did you see after three games, he's already complaining. <laughs> I love how he was like, oh, I hate it, but, but it's great that people But the game is great and I love it, I really don't change anything, but Final sucks. Please, God, save me now. 
I mean, if you just keep queuing in a different direction than you should, I mean, it's maybe yeah. to me too. We'll take you off the brom. <laughs> all right, well, that's, that's why it's easy for him. He can just auto attack, and that's it. Yeah, that's all he has to do. Occasionally, alt, put an E up every once in a while. Sometimes the wrong way. Those are my favorite. Actually, favorite it was really moments. impressive that uh, against the game, in the game against G2, I managed to hit four man or null too, and he was playing brom. So that's really a testament to his skill. <laughs> helping out his former teammate. Yeah, Looking like the other he way he, for he put the time. shield up after I ulted. So it Perfect. was really impressive. All right, so this is kind of the end for us. Odo, I do want to ask, is there anything that you want to say to the fans of Splice, to the fans of Odo? Reassure them that you're not going to dress up like a cheerleader next week after a loss to Rocket. Oh man, I mean, even if I dress up as a cheerleader, I mean, clowning around for uh, for some fun, it's still, uh, they're going to love it. So regardless, it's going to be a good bet. And um, yeah, hopefully we're going to go 2-0 this week and go to the Rivals and just, uh, not really like smash it, but just put up a good performance and you know have a good showing. Like I don't really, it's kind of, it's not good to say that we're just gonna go there and win, you know. Yeah. But even if we if we don't win, I just want to be realistic and I just want to like have a good showing and just look better as a team and pick up wins against NA. And you know if you win, if we win the whole thing, then props to us. Yeah. Hey, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you win the whole thing. I hope yeah. someone in Europe wins the whole thing. Yeah, I don't care who. Anyone, if I'm honest, really, someone. Really. So yeah, someone yeah. needs to win the whole thing. All right, well, thank you, Oda, for coming on. Thank you, Shox, for joining Bye. me in guest slash co-host status. Much love. Uh, this has been episode three of season two of the EU Foria podcast. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next week.